Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in the last lecture of EC 3400 Analog Electronics, we looked at the four operating modes of the bipolar junction transistor. So these operating modes were defined by the voltages between the collector and the base and between the base and the emitter. So for positive VBE, this PN junction here is forward biased. However, for positive VCB, this junction here is actually reverse biased. I can think of writing a little PN junction here like this. So we're mostly going to be focusing on the active region in this class, where the BE junction is forward biased, but the BC junction is reverse biased. And in this lecture, we're going to take a look at the equations that govern that mode of operation. So in the active mode, VBE and VCE are both bigger than zero. And in this active mode, the collective current is going to be modeled as having an exponential relationship with respect to the base emitter voltage. Here, IS is a saturation current, and VT is a thermal voltage. And these are more or less the kind of parameters that we saw when we looked at diodes. But as we'll see in a second, the saturation current is a little bit more complicated. I should mention that the model I'm showing here is a simplification of a general model called the ebers mol model. And that's just one possible model for BJTs. There's much more complicated models out there that handle all sorts of weird, complicated effects, like the wonderfully named gummel boon model. Now, I'll say that the base current is equal to the collector current divided by a parameter beta. And we'll usually write this along the lines of IC is equal to beta times IB. And the emitter current is the sum of the collector current and the base current. Now, the saturation current and this parameter beta are a little bit slippery because they're not really constant. And it's not just that this changes with temperature. The main complication we have beyond your usual diodes is that IS and beta are themselves functions of the voltage between the collector and the emitter. The parameter VA here is called the early voltage, and that doesn't refer to early as in terms of something happening in time. That refers to a person named early. So we're going to define ISO as being IS for the VCE equals zero case, and similarly, beta naught is beta for the VCE equals zero case. In practice, a lot of times VA is assumed to be pretty large, so we can assume that IS and beta are constant. But we're not always going to assume that. Let me expand this expression for the base current out a little bit. So we'll take this expression for IS and plug it in here, and take this expression for IC and plug it in here, and we'll take the expression for beta and plug it in down here, and then we can write this monstrosity. The main thing to notice here is that these 1 plus VC over VA terms wind up canceling. So I can write the base current like this. And notice that this is now really a constant. So the base current is not a function of the collector emitter voltage. So beta relates the collector current to the base current. It's also convenient to define a parameter that we're going to call alpha that relates the collector current to the emitter current. So to drive alpha, let's first write down this relationship that the emitter current is the collector current plus the base current, and then use our IC equal beta IAB expression, and basically rearrange the expression in terms of IB, and plug that in for IB over here. So I can write 1 plus 1 over beta times IC is equal to the emitter current. So... Let's rearrange that a little bit, and we'll write that as beta plus 1 over beta. And then we'll define a parameter alpha that's beta over 1 plus beta. So we can then write IE equals IC over alpha. So we can rearrange that and write IC equals alpha times IE. And that gives us something analogous to our IC equals beta IB expression. So the collector current is a function of two variables, VCE and VBE. So to get a handle on this, it's conventional to fix one of the parameters and then vary the other parameter. So if we fix VCE, 
and plot our collector current versus the base emitter voltage, we get something often called a transfer characteristic. And that's going to have an overall exponential shape. Now, if you change VCE, this curve is going to shift around a little bit, but not very much. In the next lecture, we'll create some small signal models for BJTs. To do this, we're going to need the slope of these kinds of curves. So the slope of a transfer characteristic curve is referred to as the transconductance. So taking the partial derivative of IC with respect to VBE, when I take the derivative of the exponent, a 1 over VT shows up in front. And I should mention that if you're someone from the more general community outside of Georgia Tech and you're not familiar with this calculus, don't worry about it. Keep watching because you'll be able to use our final results to great effect. And if your calculus is a little bit shaky, don't worry about that either because we really won't use a whole lot more calculus than, say, taking the derivative of exponential functions in this class. I don't think there's any point where I even need to take an integral. The derivatives of these kinds of functions are pretty similar. So I can look at this expression here, this is times this exponential form, and notice it's just the form here. So I can replace that whole mass with just the collector current. So I can say that the transconductance is the collector current divided by VT. Now, in practice, we're going to build our circuits to operate at a certain quiescent point, a Q point. And so for that, we'll say that we plug in our DC operating point that we're indicating with capital letters in for little i sub big C. So that is what we're going to define as our transconductance, which we'll call GM by convention. So for the next set of curves I'm going to plot, I'm going to fix IB, and then we'll plot the collector current with respect to the collector emitter voltage. And remember by the last equation on the slide, fixing IB is equivalent to fixing VBE. And it's really important that I clarify that this expression here only applies to this part of the curve. This is the active region. The part of the curve over here is associated with the saturated mode of operation, and that's governed by different equations that I'm not spelling out here. To get a sense of what this VCE over VA term is doing, it's convenient to expand the horizontal axis down to negative voltages, and we could imagine plotting minus VA, and if you were to plug minus VA in here for VCE, then you would get zero. Now, the thing I want to emphasize is that this part of this line I drew here isn't real. There's no physics going on here that gives you that kind of behavior. This is just a convenient way of visualizing the kind of line that you'll see up here in the upper right part of the graph. So you get a different line for each choice of base current, or equivalently, base emitter voltage. Now, I'm following the general description of these lines changing with the base current because that's how we traditionally describe it. But in designing with these kinds of circuits, it's really better to think about the base emitter voltage. And the fact that there's a current flowing through the base is something that has to happen because of the physics, but it's kind of incidental. So people will think about MOSFETs as voltage-controlled current sources, and they'll think about BJTs as current-controlled current sources. But I think it's really better when you're designing and analyzing circuits to think about BJTs as voltage-controlled current sources. Others might disagree with me. Yes, they're kind of amplifying current in terms of what's happening with beta, but that doesn't necessarily help you in thinking about the design it will be useful to have the slope of this kind of output characteristic curve, and we're going to call that the output conductance, but you'll see I'll very quickly flip this over and turn it into an output resistance. So here's the expression for the collector current, and let's take the partial derivative of that expression with respect to the collector emitter voltage. So this business with the one here, that winds up going away because that's just a constant, and we're left taking the derivative of the expression, including this VCE factor.
So I'm just left with all the stuff that's not VCE. Now, let me do a trick where I'll take this expression and just rearrange it. So I'll write it as ISO times this exponential form equals IC divided by this one plus VCE over VA term. And now I can recognize this as being this factor here. So I can replace all of this with IC over this one plus VCE over VA. And quite conveniently, I can take the VA, multiply it through. The VAs here are going to wind up canceling and I'll wind up with a VA here. So that gives me this expression. So the output conductance is related to the collector current divided by the collector emitter voltage plus our early voltage. Now, in practice, we'll evaluate this at a particular operating point Q, so I can plug in my capital IC for my lowercase i, capital C here, and we'll define the slope at the Q point as an output conductance, which I'll write here as G sub zero. Now, most books will express this as a resistance, and I'll do that in a second. The final slope that I want to compute is the slope of the graph of IB with respect to VBE. And I don't have a graph for this. People usually don't draw a graph for this, but we'll just go ahead and use this expression. So taking the derivative of the base current with respect to the base emitter voltage gives me this expression here. The only thing that happens when I take the derivative of the exponent is once again, the VT pulls out in front. But I can now use the same trick I've already used a couple of times and recognize that this factor here, well, that's just the base current. So this is just IB divided by VT. Once again, I'm interested in computing the slope at a particular operating point. So I'll plug in capital IB. That's our DC bias current associated with the base. And we'll call this G pi. The reason we'll call that pi is that this is used in something called the hybrid pi model that we'll look at next time. And again, this is usually expressed in terms of resistance, and I'll do that in a second. Okay, so we've defined an input conductance, g pi, and an output conductance, g naught. But we're not really used to thinking about resistances in terms of conductances. We're used to thinking about them in terms of resistances. So let me define a input resistance R pi, that's just the reciprocal of our input conductance. So that's just VT over IB. And I'll define an output resistance R naught, that's just one over G naught. And that's VA plus VCE over IC. So the input resistance lowers with increased base current, and the output resistance lowers with increased collector current. So these two parameters along with GM are going to define the small signal model for our BJT in the active mode. And this is something we'll dig into next time. Right now, why I computed these various quantities may not seem entirely motivated, but it will make sense when you see the kind of models we create in the next lecture, namely the hybrid pi model and the T model. Now, everything I've described so far was for NPN transistors. To get the version for PMP transistors, all you have to do is reverse the direction of the current arrows and reverse the direction with which you are measuring the voltages. So VBE is going to become VEB and VCE is going to become VEC and so on. And so if we do that, we get something that looks kind of like this. There's one additional tweak I want to make, which is that in terms of the way PMPs are usually used in the circuit, we wind up drawing the schematic with the emitter at the top of the schematic and the collector at the bottom. So let me actually flip this diagram upside down and draw it like that. And then all of the various quantities we put into the computation of the input and output resistances and the transconductance, all of that is the same. We just measure things in these different directions.